All right, Paul here. Um, fixing to go outside and shoot my longbow a little bit with wood arrows. And the beauty of shooting wood arrows is you got to make sure you straighten them. So here's a little video tutorial of how I go about it. You need two pieces of equipment. You need that, well, three, count the arrows, but you need a pine ridge roller. It's the one I use. And I only put one leg on it. Don't ask me why, but it seems to give me a truer reading and you need an ace roller. You don't necessarily need the ace roller. You can go get cheap alternatives from Lowe's uh, with the little rope pulleys that do the same thing. Take your wood arrow and make, match the shaft up or you can just go get an ace roller and be done with it. So how I straighten arrows and I got this from Trevor um, of how he does it. He gave us an arrow straightening tutorial at Lancaster one night in the Airbnb and so I'm just going to pass the word along and how I do it is I start from the knock in work my way to the point straightening that way so uh, you can tell in the video this has a little knock wobble and so what I do is I want to find the farthest back point that it starts to wobble so I just bring the arrow forward a little bit and I see that it's still got a little wobble there. Bring it forward a little bit more. And I see the wobble's gone right there. So I know that my discrepancy is from here forward. So I come back, find the wobble again. I'll roll it. I let the arrow come to rest. And it's going to come with the high point up. So I know that right here I see a grain run out. This is where the high spot's going to be, so I take my roller and I give it a couple of firm rolls. I put it back on the roller and I let the rest, I let the shaft rest for a minute so it can recover from what I just did. If you try to roll it, as soon as you depress it, it's going to give you a false reading. Give it 10, 15, 20 seconds to recover and then give it another roll. I still need to do a little bit more, so I'm going to come back. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do it a little harder, a little bit longer. Let that recover. I'm going to give it a roll. Much better. Slight wobble in the knot. Not bad. I'm going to give it a little bit more. And we should be getting let that recover for a minute for a second or two or three or ten or fifteen doesn't take it long but just don't roll it out and put it right on the roller and spin it all right i'm looking at that now my knock in very slight wobble i'm gonna move it forward a little bit roll it there's no wobble there so I'm working my way toward the front of the arrow. Take it again, I'm gonna roll this section. Let it recover. That's pretty good right there. I mean, that's very slight. Slight to no knock wobble. If you look at the point. Point. See, I like to cover my point up and look right here at the back of the shaft because your point could be crooked, showing a wobble indicator or wobble indication. But if you look right here at the back of the shaft, it is perfectly round, perfectly spinning true. So this arrow is done. I'm gonna put it in the in the uh, quiver. So the ones I've got turned this way, I have straightened previously. They shouldn't be as bad. So we're gonna go through this first. Here's the second one. Now that one has zero knock wobble right there. It has a tad bit of wobble at the point. As long as you get the knock true, the point can have a little wobble and not really affect you as mad. You want the knock in the truest. There is pretty good there. Right here with this grain runoff, I'm going to hit it 
just lightly. Try to true up that point just a little bit more. Not much. Let it recover. And you see there's zero wobble now on the point end at the back of the shaft. It's perfect. Put it in a quiver. Spin, knock looks good. Still, we got a little wobble at the point in. Cover the point up, yep, just a little bit. So, I'm gonna bring it back the same way I do the back. It's not as bad, so I know that the problem's back here, right there where that green runoff is. If you can see that, you see where that green runoff is right there. That's where the discrepancy is. I'm going to roll that out. A couple, two, three, five, six times. I'll let it rest, let it recover. And then give it a roll. That's a whole lot better. Knock, the, knock in looks really good. Just a slight bit, so I'm going to hit that one more time, a little closer to the point. The reason why I like to cover the point up while I'm looking at the arrow, so I'll, to me, top view, I'll cover that point up and look at the back of the shaft right there at the point. The points could be put on crooked, giving you a false indicator if your shaft is straight or not. That looks pretty good right there. She's going in the quiver. This fourth one. Give it a little spin. Knock in looks all right. Not not perfect. I'm gonna slide it forward. Find. So it looks good there. So I know my discrepancy is here. So I'm gonna roll right here. All right where a grain run off. 90% of the time, your spot is gonna be where a grain runoff is. So something you can see a little bit better, that is the grain runoff right there. That's what it'll look like. It'll look like a little triangle. Let that rest for a minute, roll it, knock in's great. The point even looks better. This one has a lot of grain runoff. That's really not high quality when you have that many grain runoffs in a shaft. These are supposed to be three rivers premium elite shafts although they'll work and you can get them straight that many grain runoffs in a shaft shouldn't be elite it should be in like a separate category they're not junk but they're not top of the line either if I roll it that looks a lot better cover the point up yep that's ready for the quiver These, I've got turned opposite, I have it straightened at all. So I'm gonna pick one up, just see what we got going here. Oh yeah, you see how much of a wobble we got on that knock in? So I'm gonna find where it stops at. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna roll it. It doesn't look like it's got much wobble there. So my problem is gonna be from here forward. Roll it again, let it come to a rest. And I'm gonna roll this section in between the two stands. Now I'm putting a fair bit of pressure on there. Nothing that's gonna break it, but you gotta you gotta let it know your who's the boss. Let that rest and recover. That's better. Still not perfect. The knock in or the point in looks really good. So right here is gonna be basically where I'm focusing. There's a bit of grain runoff right there. that recover right 
right in here, right on the uh, cresting part. Make sure I get the top, pick it up, and roll it out. Sometimes when you fix a spot in the middle, it'll run one way or it'll run the other way sometimes. So sometimes you find yourself having to go back toward the knock and work your way back forward again. better. It's not perfect, but it's better. It's definitely shootable. All right, I'll put that one in the quiver. Let's check out another one. I'd like to get at least half a dozen done. I've got five so far. I think I've got five. Yep, five so far. Oh, that one ain't got a point. Let's not use that one. Try this one. Mm, that's not bad. The knock-in looks really good and straight. The point, it's got a little wobble to it, a biggie. I'm going to roll that. You see this grain runoff right here? It's pretty substantial grain runoff. you got two big ones right there, then some farther forward. Right in there. Not, it didn't have as much as that last area, but it's definitely got some grain runoff. All right. Hit these two grain runoff right quick. Run up by the point. Let that recover. I'll save these for a later date. Ends perfect. A little more wobble on the point end. Now it looks good here when I pull the arrow back, so I know that it's in between here and here where I'm going to have the unevenness. So I'm going to let it find its top, come back. Hit that pretty hard. Let it recover. Can's perfect still. Point in. It's good enough to shoot now. Still has a slight bit, and I can still work that a little bit more. I'm gonna hit that one spot a little more. A little more pressure this time. You want enough pressure to where you feel like you might break it, but you don't. Some errors take more than that, depending on the material. All right, that's good right there. That's perfect. If you can see that, covering that point up right there at the back, it's spinning nice and true. Put it in the quiver. All right, guys, this is Paul. Hope you uh, get a little something out of that. I'm going to do a little bit more of this going forward because I really fell in love with shooting wood arrows and longbows. As you can tell over there, I've got three longbows on the wall and all wood arrows set up for them. So I've got a set of Paul Jalons matched to my Tomahawk, and I got another set of Paul Jalon Elite Arrows coming for the Timber Point. And I'm in between the Three Rivers Arrows and the Tyler Moore Arrows. Um, let me show you a Tyler Moore arrow. This is one that he had made me. Simple, Bowling Classic Knock, simple crest with top hat points and does a really good job. These come pretty straight from him, very minimal. Had to mess with them. Um, you can check out him. I can't remember the name of his, his saddle, saddle something. I'll get it out and put it in the comments. Um, but he makes wood arrows, sells a lot of wood arrows and aluminum arrows. but. I have fell in love, love with shooting wood arrows and longbows, so we're going to do a whole lot more videos on this coming going forward. And uh, if you got any questions, just hit me up in comments, and I'll answer them the best I can. If I don't know the answer, I will find it. But we're about to go throw the quiver on some mud boots and go outside and shoot a little bit. See you outside. All right, outside, a little brisk. It's thirty-some degrees. 
We're gonna get the first few shots of the day on film with the arrows we just straightened and uh, we'll see how they fly. Shots are roughly 20 yards. So the bow is a big stick gremlin, 56 inches. It's made out of zebra wood with camo limb veneers on the backs and the bellies. Got a good leather grip, running a Selway quiver on it at the moment, and a good triple T string with cat whiskers. I have to re uh, retune for these. I'm just out here seeing how they're flying. They're flying good and straight, but I am impacting um, a little right as they're a little weak. They're 50-55 with 145 green heads. I need to have probably 125s stiffen them up just a little bit. I'm pulling 44 pounds on the fingers with these. So I'm about six inches or so to the right, but they're flying really good off of it. So I'm just aiming down center where I would normally aim and just seeing how they're grouping. So I think if I was to drop that 25 pounds off the front, it would bring them over, stiffen them up, bring them over to the left just a little bit. I mean, I do have a slight bit of room. I might be able to move the strike plate out just a hair. But I don't really have much room on the shelf to do that. So I'm going to play with uh, either trimming a little bit off of them or, you know, lowering that point weight just a little bit. But they're grouping really well, which tells me I don't, I'm not getting a ton of contact. That's three arrows, <clears throat> all good shots. Well, all good feeling shots. And you'll see, I don't know if you can see, I'll walk you down there. They uh, they grouped really well. They flew good and straight. Didn't see a whole lot of porpoise into them. So I just need to move that center shot over a little bit by stiffening them up just a hair, but they're all good in a line. I just need to move them over about four or five inches. All right, now, I know where, now that I know where they're shooting at, I'm gonna aim off just a little bit. Try to bring them up center a little bit. Might go glue on some 125s here in a minute and see if that helps. But if anything, I can trim a half inch off of them and make them perfect. I'll just aim up on that front shoulder a little bit and it drops them right in there. That's called torque on the string.
take a look at that group right there. That looked, uh, looked a whole lot better. I was able to aim off a little bit toward that front shoulder a little bit. Bring them into the killing radius anyway. Would have no reservations of gluing on a 125 head and go hunting right now. Those are all good kill shots. <laughs> I glanced that one off the tree right there. It's time to buy some inserts for this target. I tend to, to hit there a lot. Noticed. This cool quiver. Made by Whiskey City Tread Gear. My good buddy David Sneed come up with a design of a nice little small hand size quiver. It's great for backyard use or just plugging around a 3D course. Not really a competition quiver, really. It doesn't have a ton of room in it, but for what I'm doing here and going out to your local club, it'd be a great, great little quiver. Um, it's got plenty of pockets on it for, you know, your small things, your tabs, your pencils, you know, to slide a scorecard in, that type of thing. And uh, he's got other little inventions he's coming up with with 3D printing, like, uh, like scorecard punchers and pencil holders, you know, to keep your pencil handy. Um, so check out Whiskey City Trad Gear, and uh, they'd appreciate it. All right, let's shoot another group. These might not be off as far as I think. Just need to warm up a little bit. Get a full pull on them. Yeah, they're shooting pretty good. Change that. Oh, wait a minute, I can. This little director view, pretty cool. Got two down there, side by side. <laughs> I would throw that one up toward the neck, wouldn't I? Torquing Paul. All right, a lot better. Let's go look at that one. Not too bad. Got three in there I'm proud of. That one I could take back. All right. <laughs> 